You're watching Telecom TV's Spotlight on 5G series. It's Wednesday, the 1st of March, and this is The Slice. Headlines today, the ORAN Alliance outlines its goals for the year ahead, Orange details its 5G standalone plans and timescales, and why it really is time to start planning for 6G. Hello, I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content for Telecom TV, and welcome to Wednesday's edition of The Slice. All this week, Telecom TV is bringing you daily coverage of the major 5G news and analysis from MWC Barcelona. I'm reporting from our studio, while my editorial colleagues Ray Lemaitre and Yanitza Boyadieva are reporting from the event itself. This year's event has already seen plenty of discussion around CSP strategies and the impact of disaggregation on the ecosystem. So let's now hear from Ray and Yanni with the major news from MWC today, including open RAN updates from AT&T and Vodafone. It's day three at MWC 23 and the crowds are still very much in evidence. A surefire sign that this show is finally back on its feet in the post-COVID era. And as expected, one of the main talking points of this year's show has been the potential impact on operator strategies and the broader ecosystem in general of Open RAN. Open RAN supporters got a modicum of encouragement here this week when AT&T's network CTO, Igo Elbas, took to the podium and declared that the development and the deployment of open, disaggregated radio access networks will definitely happen because it's important for future innovation. The timescales might not be so encouraging though. Elbus wasn't in Barcelona to share details on an AT&T open run rollout. Instead, the giant US operator is continuing with trials and lab tests. But he did know that while current 5G network investments and rollouts wouldn't be held up in any way to wait for open run technology to mature, he noted there would be further 5G investment cycles that include open run options. What we can take away from that is that AT&T doesn't expect to wait until the 6G era to make use of multi-vendor disaggregated RAN systems. But it might be a few years yet before there's any meaningful and impactful open RAN activity from AT&T. In the meantime, the more vocal open RAN operators are looking for additional support from their peers. During the O-RAN Alliance ecosystem briefing session held on Tuesday afternoon, Vodafone's head of Open RAN, Francisco Paco Martin, provided an update on Vodafone's progress in various European markets, but also appealed for more operators to step forward and get involved in collaborative activities that will further fuel Open RAN ecosystem activity. It's certainly notable that two years after five major European operators, including Vodafone, signed an Open RAN MOU document and initiated joint development work, no other telcos from the region have added their names to the document and committed resources to the open RAN cause, seemingly leaving the tier one operators to do the groundwork. Ericsson is in the spotlight today at MWC 23, but not for all the right reasons. The Swedish vendor has raised questions about the status of its ongoing investigation by the US Department of Justice into alleged corrupt business practices in Iraq by announcing that its chief compliance officer, Lori Wadi, is leaving the company and is being replaced on a temporary basis by Jan Spraff, who is currently the vendor's head of compliance for Europe and Latin America. The company has started the process of seeking a permanent replacement for Yodi. Ericsson announced late last year that it had agreed with the Department of Justice and the US Securities and Exchange Commission to extend by one year the term of the company's independent compliance monitor to June 2024 and then noted in early January this year that it had set aside $220 million to cover the fines it is expecting from the Department of Justice for alleged breaches of its 2019 Deferred Prosecution Agreement. The scandal swirling around the company's historical business practices in Iraq just won't go away, it seems. 
But of course, the giant mobile networking vendor also continues to do what it does best, make progress in helping its telco customers get the best out of their wireless networks. One example from this week includes the introduction of a new software feature that extends the maximum reach of the company's mid-band TDD advanced antenna system radio from 15 kilometers to an incredible 100 kilometers. Although such reach does require uninterrupted line of sight between transmitter and receiver. Australian operator Telstra, which faces the challenge of providing coverage in rural and remote areas of the country, has successfully completed a 5G data call over a distance of 100 kilometers on its commercial network using the Ericsson technology. And in Indonesia, Ericsson is working with Qualcomm to help network operator Telkomsel trial the potential of 5G fixed wireless access technology over spectrum in the 3.5 gigahertz and 26 gigahertz bands to provide high-speed, low-latency broadband connectivity services. The hunt for 5G use cases continues, and some of the industry's biggest names have been sharing some interesting developments this week. German operator Deutsche Telekom unveiled a research project called Drone for Parcel 5G that shows how its 5G network is enabling autonomous delivery drones. The operator noted that this is the first deployment of a new 5G campus network solution for business customers. And its goal is to test the operations of autonomous delivery flights with 5G connected drones. As a result, according to the telco, road traffic and delivery times will be reduced in the future. In addition, major operators KDDI and Telefonica are collaborating in a 5G-enabled extended reality project for a digital twin store. The showcase is being demonstrated here in Barcelona this week and is aimed to prove the capabilities of extended reality to create a sense of co-presence and togetherness. Sturfy and Mawari have also partnered in the project, which allows a shopper in a physical store to connect with a remote shop assistant. And in other 5G-related news, it appears that industry is moving more towards regionalization rather than globalization when it comes to developing new use cases and applications powered by the technology. After similar efforts made in the US, China, India and Europe, Canadian operator Rogers aims to develop 5G applications designed for its domestic market and is teaming up with Microsoft Azure to encourage developers to build 5G network-aware applications. So those are some of the key developments from the third day at this year's Mobile World Congress. We'll be back tomorrow for the final time this week with more breaking news. Ray Lemaitre and Yanitza Bojieva there reporting this morning from the MWC show floor. Just one more day to go. Now, if you missed our previous daily editions of The Slice, they are all available to watch on demand via the Telecom TV website. And as part of our Spotlight on 5G coverage, we will continue to add new videos to the site all week. Now, as was mentioned in our report, OpenRAN is receiving a lot of interest from the operator community. Whilst some are eagerly embracing it and accelerating its commercialization, others are content to closely monitor developments and work to their own timeframes. Ray sat down with Greg McCall, Chief Networks Officer at BT, to find out what the UK operator has planned for OpenRAN. It's not going to be part of our macro network in the next five years. We've got a pretty significant program delivering to remove high-risk vendors out of our network. Um, and that's where our focus is, you know, working with Nokia and working with Ericsson um, to, to roll out that in the RAN. That being said, we are very active and we're doing a lot of um, experimentation around Open RAN. We absolutely buy the agenda around diversification. Um, you know, we're very happy with the partners we've got, but, you know, diversifying the, the ecosystem is important. Um, however, what we all need to remember is the reason why we do technology is to deliver better outcomes for our customers. And we've got to do that in a more cost-efficient and effective way. So if OpenRAN can help us solve those problems, we'll all be, we'll, we'll be all ears. And you'll be able to watch the entire interview with Greg McCall here on Telecom TV as part of our Spotlight on 5G coverage. Staying with OpenRAN, yesterday afternoon, the ORAN Alliance held its annual ecosystem briefing at MWC. ORAN Alliance Chairman Alex Yinsung Choi 
reported on progress and set out his key focus areas for the year ahead. One of our main priorities is to ensure all the specifications are compliant with the 3GPP. Moving forward, we would like to intensify the cooperation between Orient Alliance and 3GPP and make it smoother and more efficient. Second, we want to improve the Orient release and future planning, maintaining agility at the same time providing proactive guidance to the industry for product uh, developments. We want to boost the open software developments by improving the open reference design to better support the ORAN implementation. We want to boost the ORAN certification and batching program in cooperation with the ever-growing number of OTICs. Last but not least, we want to exploit and unleash ORAN potential for vertical industries. It's very important. The briefing also featured two panel discussions moderated by my colleague Rayla Maitra, and you can watch them right here on Telecom TV. Just click the latest content tab on our dedicated Spotlight on 5G page. The rollout of standalone 5G has not progressed as rapidly as many had thought. Only last week, Orange launched its 5G SA network in Spain with other live deployments to follow. Mikhail Trabia, Chief Technology and Innovation Officer for Orange, explains why this is so complex and when we can expect to finally realize the full potential and value of 5G. 5G SA will be live in 2023, but then it's also about transforming our IT, bringing agility in order to be able to commercialize it, because at the end of the day, with 5G SA, you can do network slicing, you can have on-demand quality, for gaming, uh, for uh, uh, video, for some uh, uh, security services that need uh, very specific requirements. It can be low latency, it can be guaranteed uh, connectivity. Uh, uh, but to do that, and to do that on an agile way, uh, you need to have not only those slices, but to be able to open them dynamically. And this is an evolution that will also embark IT evolution, end-to-end -end evolution, not only on the network side, and this will take a little bit more time, so that's rather 2024, 2025, to have, I would say, the full uh, 5G SA capability end-to-end -end that we will be able to expose to, uh, to the customers and to, to our partners. Please do watch the full interview later, as Mikhail also talks about automation and open RAN. It's well worth your time. Now, although this is our Spotlight on 5G program, you can't ignore the looming presence of 6G. Speaking at the annual NGMN Press and Industry Briefing, board member and CTO of US Cellular, Mike Irizarry, explained why we should care about 6G whilst not abandoning the progress made with 5G. You're probably wondering, we haven't extracted all the value out of 5G. Why are we talking about 6G? I get that question from my boss all the time. So I'm going to tell you three things. We don't know what it is. We don't know how much it's going to cost. And we don't know what problem yet it's solving. But here's what I can tell you. Usage is continuing to grow at a rapid pace. There are new applications that are being comp contemplated, such as telepresence uh, and immersive video that we're not sure yet 5G can support. We're not saying it can't, but we want to be ready. And these technology transitions take years. So we need to start thinking about now what consumers want, what industries want, what the verticals want, so that if 5G and 5G Advance need enhancements, we're ready for that. And maybe that ends up being what 6G is, some enhancements to that. We just don't know yet. 6G is one of the three major focus areas of the NGMN, along with disaggregation and green networks, and the organization is taking a nuanced and practical approach to the evolution of cellular. And talking of green networks, Telecom TV's Charlotte Kahn hosted a session yesterday on the importance of sustainability within the telco industry. She was joined by panelists from Telstra, BT, HPE and Intel. And one of the questions she posed was what can telcos do to become more sustainable? 
I think what telcos can do is actually be really clear about what they're trying to drive. So be very, very clear on your expectations and then actually map a way to achieve them um, and um, and then be being transparent with how you're actually going. So if, if you're doing well, great. If you're not doing so well, you're still being transparent with your progress and you're making sure that you are bringing, uh, it's the collaboration that I think is really important. You might not be able to solve it all on your own, but bring others in on the journey. What am I going to do differently? I just think there is, this is my first time at MWC and there is so much, uh, so much opportunity that's been before for my eyes in terms of um, collaboration opportunities. So um, I'm going to leverage those networks and see what I can continue to learn, Charlotte. And of course, you can watch the whole panel discussion here on Telecom TV as part of our Spotlight on 5G series. Time now though for a quick run through of other news from MWC today. Telefonica, one of the founding operators of the Open Gateway Initiative, has launched a global call for startups interested in working with network APIs. It is offering potential funding opportunities of up to 5 million euros through its open innovation investment units. According to the GSMA, 24% of electricity used by global mobile operators is now being purchased from renewable sources a significant increase on this time last year. Although, as the graphic shows, some regions are making far more progress than others. And finally today, Deutsche Telekom has collaborated with Microsoft to offer 5G private networks. Based on the Azure private mech platform, the solution is targeting SME customers with what it describes as a pay-as-you-grow offering. As well as reporting on the latest news from MWC Barcelona, we have a whole series of special Spotlight on 5G programmes for you. We've been bringing you interviews with leading CSP executives, adding the videos to our site throughout the week, working our editors to breaking point. Plus, there's still time to watch our MWC preview show, where Ray and I chat with HPE, VMware, AMD and Appledore about the key themes we expect to see covered during this year's show. Don't miss our Top 10 Mobile Moments series, where Ray and I look back at Telecom TV's 21 years of coverage of the industry's largest event. All the thrills and spills are there. We serve up a fresh edition of The Slice every day of MWC with all the important news and analysis from the Telecom TV team. And then the following week, it's time for The After Show, our live Q&A programme. We'll be analysing the major developments from MWC with our studio guests. So start sending in your questions now. Yes, please start thinking about next week's live Q&A show. Any comments, observations or questions you have from MWC, then do get in touch with us. That's all for today's edition of The Slice. Join us again on Thursday for our final report this year from Barcelona on day four of MWC. Until then, thank you for watching and goodbye.